Reaching adolescence is a confusing time for anyone. Not afraid to display the coming of age as an exploration of sexual and violent urges that come with puberty, the Japanese anime Fooly Cooly stylized FLCL is one of the great examples of those types of stories. Spanning only six OVA episodes from 2000 to 2001, the show is known for being wacky, irrelevant, and most definitely postmodern. Established in the decades following World War II, the term is one stretched to many definitions. For theorist Jean Baudrillard, it represents the death of modernity, the death of the real, and the death of sex. In terms of fiction, this generally refers to the use of repeated pastiche and parody to previous works, creating a version of reality even further removed from what came before. Fully Cooly embraces this fully, starting with its convoluted plot bound with anime trappings. 12-year-old Naoto is hanging out with his brother's ex-girlfriend when he is hit on the head by the guitar of an insane space alien named Haruko. This causes robots to begin pouring out of a portal in his head in an attempt to summon the power of a space pirate king against an evil corporation who wants to iron out the creases of the world. Where'd you get that line from? Anime? In creating Fully Cooly, director Kazuya Surumaki and anime studio Gainax decided to create a unique and personal project by putting as many ideas as they loved or had nostalgia for together and building a plot around it. <laughs> this intertextuality ranges from pastimes such as baseball, which is featured heavily in the fourth episode, to cultural references, both Japanese. Here's my weapon, it's all for you! <laughs> and Weston. Just take care of yourself till I get there. You know, more mature looking. Something that a woman I haven't seen in a while would think this guy fairly virile, but also nurturing and supportive. Something like that. That's what I'm looking for. Oh, don't I get one of those candies? I want to get the sweetest one. Super sweet, if you know what I mean. This helps create a hyper real world where heterogeneous animation styles and fourth wall breaking become the norm. Those slow motion scenes are really tough, huh? Yeah, you have to hold your breath until they cut. You can get cramps from that, you know? What? I thought it was a special effect. You're doing the slow motion? In her 1984 essay, A Cyborg Manifesto, Donna Haraway states, we are all chimeras theorized and fabricated hybrids of machine and organism. In short, we are cyborgs. This is in reference to the idea that identity is a constant flux, that people change as they move through different aspects of their life. It only makes sense that coming from a country with a long history of fictional and real robotics as Japan, that Fully Cooly consumes this glossy past and continues its descent into pastiche. The robots that appear from Nauta's head show that his personality is in a state of flux. He is a cyborg of insecurities. The phallic imagery is obvious, as Nauta lusts after the women around him, most obviously Haruko herself, but the robots in his brain show more than that. Most prolific is Kanti, a robot that represents Nauta's older brother who left for America pursuing a career in baseball. Nauta's inferiority complex presents itself as he hates the attention Kanti receives over him, but loves the violent power he gains when he merges with the robot to fight other robots. As he gains this power, female onlookers get bloody noses, a shorthand in anime for arousal, another representation of sexuality that plays with a convention in the wacky world of the show. Anyway, nothing can happen till you swing the bat. <laughs> Fully Cooley's alternative rock soundtrack heard throughout this video is provided by the band The Pillows and is part of the series for the same reason as many other things. Director Surumaki was a fan of them. Of course, their inclusion means more than that. Fully Cooley is punk rock, against convention, yet still daring to create its own style by using it. For Baudrillard, postmodernism represents a nihilist take on a world losing reality. For Fully Cooley, 
It represents the creation of a world both unique and digestible. In an interview shortly after the creation of the show, Surumaki reflected, I'd like you to think of Fooly Cooly as imagination being made physical and tangible, just as it is for me when I take whatever is in my head and draw it. And when drawing from the wacky irrelevant world of postmodernism, what better place to look than the confusion of growing up?